Hey, this is Kevin Kitchen with Once Upon a Game, and I'm just a little bit frustrated right now, and I'm just going to go ahead and record a video because I'm annoyed that my handicraft skills are not as good uh, as I thought they were going to be. So anyway, uh, just talking about uh, I, when I first started, uh, when I got back into board games, um, I did not know what a dice tower was. I'd heard of the podcast. And listened to it pretty regularly, and I was like, oh, that's a real thing. And obviously, they've been around for centuries, so uh, stupid me. But anyway, became fascinated with uh, dice towers and uh, uh, just different ways of creating uh, creating them. And uh, so I've had a couple of good successes with other things, and then tried saw something in a hobby store the other day that I thought was going to make a really cool one, and... Uh, my execution just did not turn out that great. Probably not having the right tools. Um, uh, trying to do it too fast as I'm, I don't know. So anyway, so these are these are my three uh, dice tower versions that I've that I've come up with, and uh, I'm just going to show them to you real quick. Uh, some of you've seen before, I'm sure. But uh, so anyway, this is my uh, this is my dice tray, which is also from a craft store. Piece of felt or a piece of foam, stiff foam, a little foam on the bumper, and you know, works good for catching the dice. This is a uh, cardstock dice tower that I made. It's from one sheet, uh, two sheets of cardstock, I believe. Um, the I think the uh, plans are on BGG already. Uh, you just cut and fold uh, the tower part, and that's a little lamp, so it ensures it slides and hits the first baffle, and then uh, you glue these. Uh, two baffles in. There's one here. There's one on the opposite side. It's a standard structure, and you've got the, the exit chute. Um, so there's a, there's a baffle that goes here, and a baffle that goes here, and it feeds it into the chute. You know, pretty standard, but it's all built with, you know, just cardstock. And it, I mean, I built this thing like two years ago, I guess, maybe a year and a half ago, and it's still pretty sturdy. And I built one here out of uh, some camo paper, and using the, using my silhouette cameo, I cut a uh, I cut a uh, some stars in there, and because one of the baffle glues in there, it uh, uh, covered it up. So it was kind of the idea to, to put that in there. They work. They work really well. I mean, they're they're uh, pretty decent. If you get the dice in there while you're looking for a camera, so you don't know. You know, they come in and they do the job. And I like that the cardstock there has a little bit of spring to it. So instead of them just sliding back and forth, they actually kind of do a little trampoline number off of there. Ta-da! So then what I mentioned when I did my 3D printer review before, that I was proud of, and I have not actually uh, not posted yet, but uh, we're going to see it now here, is this is my five-segment uh, dice tower. This is all 3D printed. Um, I sprayed it with a brown primer and then painted the outside black manually kind of match my dice tray uh, which I thought was kind of cool so uh, that's that one and now this one is is different and what I what I like about it um, I thought was you know pat myself on the shoulder kind of ingenious is uh, instead of using the baffles you know just the back and forth baffles I was thinking of the old Plinko game uh, you might have seen on uh, Price is Riot or a Carnival or something like that where the ball uh, or pachinko machine actually has it too. The ball comes down, hits the different pegs, working its way down. And so that's how I designed this one. And I've got some pictures I can show you show later. But uh, uh, each layer here. So I've got a top top layer, which is the it's this chute. I call it the chute. And I got the uh, base, which is the ramp. And then each of these layers, three layers. I was going to do four, but it started getting kind of tall anyway. And I think I think the, uh, the three layers works fine anyway. Are these crisscross uh, uh, sections that uh, the die comes down, hits this one, has to bounce off, and can, can't help. They're, they're cross-stacked. So you got one this way, one this way, one this way. Like a, so you got plus sign, X sign, plus sign. And they uh, go down. They have to hit baffles. You can't, you can't really miss them. And so, I like this one. This one works really well, I think. And it still does the, you know, it does the randomization, but instead of hitting a baffle where it could just slide back and forth, 
it's it's hitting a it's hitting the pegs that uh, will cause it to tip, roll, keep spinning. And we played uh, my son and I played Rebellion the other night. And we're dropping ten dice down this thing with no problem. Grab a few more here. Get some tens, get some eights. Yeah, there they go. And they get some, get some good dice action on them. I mean, it, it works really well. So I was working on a new design of this with the 3D printer, and I was doing it with the layers. And, and these I had actually uh, designed little pegs on the, on the top of each layer to insert into holes in the bottom of the other layers. And those didn't work very well. The 3D printing is not that... Um, precise uh, and I didn't I guess I didn't leave enough uh, buffer uh, or you know padding on it to make sure that the peg would fit in the hole to the line and then so you, you do the crisscross and you glue them together and that's what these are it's all it's all glued together um, that's just pretty air there on the bottom side but there's a, there's the holes so you can see the holes in the first layer because I didn't realize uh, that I didn't need them in the first layer I mean I did realize that but I didn't uh, I, used, I copied the same components to make each layer, so I just didn't remove them. So anyway, so we go. So I like that. So I'd come up with a new, uh, a new means of, of doing it. I'll try to grab it here on the camera. It failed because the three D printer has kind of like stopped working, which is kind of annoying. Um, so this was my revised edition. Got a little, little more uh, steeper ramp, more open ramp, whereas this one's a little more closed. It has those little walls there because the walls curve. They got the dice out. I don't know how any dice get stuck in there. But I wanted it to be a straight shot out. Obviously, you don't have the holes in the bottom anymore. So that one printed out pretty good. And the dice are doing. Ooh, down the shoot. I even uh, banked it a little higher. This pretty green, you can do whatever you want. Actually, I added a little bank there at the back to make sure that it picked up speed so that it wouldn't lose speed on the, if it had to roll the whole way down. It would get this and go a little faster and push it out. The, push it out. So then to stack them, instead of the pegs, like I said, I designed a layer like this and I made it kind of like an aerosol spray can cap and sized it so that it would fit right on top. And then you can glue it together. You can glue the two stacks. I also, instead of using cylinders, like this one. And see, originally these were going to be uh, one cylinder going across four layers, cylinder, 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 cylinder. Um, just kind of, kind of, you know, just spinning around. And I realized that a die could actually hit the cylinder and go to the right or the left and fall and not hit another cylinder the whole way down. It would, instead it would be like stairs. So I had to put the other cross cylinder in there and that's why it's slightly smaller to keep a die from landing on top. So I reshaped them, made them, uh, you know, triangles instead of circles. So that I would hit and rock down and I made them the same size and also made them in, in line with each other. Whereas in this one there, that smaller one's slightly below and going through it. And was really excited, had it going. And then when I started printing, this is really kind of soft. Uh, this is a thin layer here and that's no big deal, but some of this is really starting to, I don't even see it on this, starting to separate. So it frustrated me because the printer's kind of, I kept doing things to try to get the printer back and it just only got worse and they ended up, I think, frying the print head on it, which really annoys me because I had lots of things I wanted to do. So anyway, back to the drawing board. So there was that one and uh, this is very expensive on Shapeways because it's a lot of, it's not expensive to use your own printer, but it's very expensive to order it. So I may make the plans available for the that wants it. But then I had the same principle with the shoot. Three, let three or four layers, drop it down. Dice would go tink, 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 and roll at the edge. And I was really, was really looking forward to that one. So. so, since the printer was out, I was trying to go to a different route of making a new and improved version of this. And I bought, I don't have it handy. I bought a cardboard tube. Kept playing with different different strategies and was trying to get a cardboard like mailing tube and was going to crisscross dowels into the cardboard mailing tube and just drop drop the dice down the chute 
goes across, come out the bottom, but then design the bottom and the output shoot and all that kind of stuff starts getting kind of hinky. Um, and so I had all those materials, I was going to start working on that. And then we went back to the craft store for something else and I saw this box, which was pretty cool. Right here. Now this is sold as a little carry case. So it's a little, little, um, you know, so in my hands, it's not that big. There was a little, um, uh, look like a little briefcase, a little art case, something like that. And so I got that and started trying to figure out ways to make it work. Because my goal was, so this is the cover. And originally when I bought it, uh, you can see the holes here. This was the hasp with lock. These are the holes for the handle. And then on this side were hinges. You can see the holes there for the hinges. And then it would open and it was just a box. I thought, okay, what, how, what can I do with this? So my thought was, because the lid is so deep, I was going to take that and make it a portable dice tower. And this would be the tray. And I would do I would do some more padding to this one in here. And then this was open. So so what I did was I put in uh, put in the ramp. I bought some three sixteenths inch basswood, you know, hobby hobby craft wood. And this is three inches, and I put two three inch strips across the front, cut the hole. And as you can see, my my plan with the I was really originally going to just drill four holes here and then cut out these little notches and have a beautiful little hole. My plans were to put stops here, uh, stops here, stops here, stops across the back, and make a three inch cover that would go over it. Uh, I was going to rehinge like this. Right, so then I'm going to open, and then as you saw, it would close, and you can take it with you, and then you put that cover over it. Uh, the hinges would be on the bottom, the clasp would be there. I would have to make feet to raise this up. You know, there were still some steps to go. Uh, I was going to, you know, to put put uh, wood filler in these uh, nail holes. I was all glued, but I you know, nailed it to be secure because I was going to be drilling through it. So when I went to go drill, this is half inch dowel. So when I was going to drill, um, the back that came with the box, this is the face I added to it. The back that's on the box is very thin and started splintering. There's my sweet little girl, Schmoopy. Yeah, hi, Schmoopy. And so on the back side here, these were gonna all be glued in and cut off. But as of right now, I've kind of scrapped the project until I can figure out a better way. It splintered the back. These holes got way too big, so there's no I can just glue them in. I mean, I could sit there and hot glue them in, and then but then you can cut them off and it wouldn't be flush, and then the carrying thing's all kind of gone, and you know, just kind of a nuisance. So this is half inch dowel that I was putting in, and I I, I sat there in Photoshop and figured out uh, I figured I needed an inch clearance. So this is a, this is an inch down. And it needs clearance between each dowel on all sides. And this one is, this one doesn't look like it is because it's not on this side because I drilled from the other side and the drill went in crooked. If I had a drill press, it probably would have worked fine. So maybe y'all are learning from this. I don't know why I'm, I, I'm not really venting. I'm just, I guess this is just a, you know, post-mortem here of this project. I think it's a cool project. I think it would have been really cool to have this hinged. Uh, this is just... Uh, like I said, this is some 3 16 wood. I got some, some half inch 3 16 inch wood here. This was the bottom. Uh, I glued another piece inside here as a stop. I put the ramp in. I glued this on the side. I hot glued this one down uh, so it would stay in place. It was going to take the front of the head and I didn't want just glue holding it. I couldn't nail it uh, very conveniently. Uh, and then the dowels were to go through. I was going to chop the dowels off flush, uh, stain the whole thing, paint it, do something, make it look really cool. And then, so like the tools just like started nicking everything. There's a piece out there. This is all splintered and got all ugly, which I could, you know, again, if it had been tight and I could have done it, I could have wood filled it, sanded it, and made it look good. But this back, I mean, there's too much play. I can't glue a half inch dowel in there with it wiggling around like that. So, I don't like repeating myself, is the problem. So, it's like I don't want to go buy all these materials. I mean, this thing was like $5.99, 40% discount on Hobby Lobby. 
was nothing. It came with, you know, came with the lid. The dowel's a dollar, and this was less than one dowel. Um, uh, this basswood and stuff's really cheap. You know, this is, I bought one piece of this three inch. So this is made out of the three inch. This is made of, you know, it's all one piece. It's a 24 inch piece. And uh, so, uh, but the good news is. So anyway, uh, I'm happy at how it turned out. I mean, not like I said, not the execution of it. Uh, I think the design is really good, and maybe somebody watching this will take it further. Um, I like the I like the plinko uh, plinko method, and it handles it handles the dice. It really sends them right out. So. And the design, you know, the, the kind of the goal is this is an inch from the side and this is an inch from the side. And it's, it's amazing that you cannot, you cannot get many in there. Uh, I was going to do, I was even going to reduce it to one quarter inch dowel. And uh, uh, that was not, uh, that, that, that put a few more, but ended up with too big of a gap because of trying to maintain that inch. Uh, so I did that with Photoshop and uh, was actually, you know, measuring. I had a, I had a half inch uh, circle that I would place, you know, when I wanted them. But then I had a, a one inch circle that I would move around to make sure, you know, and then I printed a pattern and, uh, uh, you know, set it down. And then once I started drilling, man, it just, it just ate this box apart. It's just this thin wood. Um, so these aren't these aren't bolted in. I mean, you know, so it works. I mean, I'll probably still use it. I just thought it was going to be this really cool showpiece uh, that was going to give me some really um, cool results. But uh, in the end, uh, I think the design is a A plus. The execution is an F because of my tools. But uh, like I said, I think the design works really great. And just I mean. I love it. It'll hit. It'll hit here. It'll bounce this way. It can fall this way. It can fall this way. If it falls this way, then that's fine. It's hit. It's hit one two, and the goal here is that this one, this hole is designed so that a one inch object, uh, which you know, standard die, uh, you know, corner to opposing corners about an inch, uh, when it goes in, it can't help. I mean, you it, you can use small dice and you miss one of these, but there's really not a path. That would get it through without at least hitting some some kind of adjuster to flip the die around. So anyway, that's my report. I don't know why I this will probably be the least viewed video ever, but it's fine. It's just just gave me something out of it instead of. Uh, at least you got to see my new my uh, my new grip map, my new and improved grip map. Uh, this is a three by three uh, Starfield uh, Starfield Sector Three, I think it's called. Uh, for playing X Wing on uh, the original one I had was white. This is this is black. Uh, so there's grip surface on it, so the stuff doesn't slide around as much. You can use it for tile games and stuff too. Uh, but I just got it out and was laying it flat, so. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope you made it this far. And if you didn't, then you're probably smarter. But uh, that is a tale of three, three dice tower designs. They all work. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.